Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Fight Focus. And for today's video, we will be covering insane timidity cases in MMA fights. Also, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and comment what video you want to see next. Let's get to it. Over the years, MMA's rules have evolved to ensure that not only is fighter safety paramount, but entertainment levels are too. Thankfully, timidity inside the cage is relatively rare, meaning most fights, even if they stall out on the ground or in the clinch, remain mostly entertaining. Just to make it clear, we aren't crapping on these fighters at all. For this video, we have compiled a list of instances where MMA fighters got timidity warnings in their bouts or even had some of their fights stopped due to the butt scoot. Number 7, Clay Guida. Drank's starting to pay off a little bit here, and he is trash talking a great manner we've never seen before. He's saying all day, and he just ain't that shit. At UFC on FX4, Clay Guida unveiled his Caleb Starnes impression, constantly backpedaling in an effort to avoid engaging in an exchange with the heavy handed Gray Maynard. While staying on the outside wasn't a bad game plan, Guida took his unassertive approach too far and was even warned for timidity by referee Dan Mergliata at one point in the fight. Dan Mergliata gonna start to warn Clay. Many had high expectations for this matchup. For that reason, there were plenty of MMA fans, fighters, and pundits voicing their disappointment on Twitter. While those watching the fight weren't happy, there was probably nobody more upset with Guida's antics than Maynard, who began taunting and verbally berating his opponent. Number 6 and Daniel Aguilar Before the sleepy RFA 15 unfolded on June 6th, fans best knew referee Mike Beltran as the man with the longest mustache in MMA. But Mike made new waves with the ballsy and rare decision he made with 35 seconds left in the bout between Sam Toomer and an extremely timid Daniel Aguilar. Beltran warned Aguilar on several instances in the first two rounds to stop perpetually stalling the action with butt scoots. Finally, in the third round, and because Aguilar refused to engage and continued to resort to the butt scoot, Beltran stopped the action and deducted a point from the 34-year-old Brazilian. I gave him several warnings to engage. I talked to him, I gave him stern warnings, and uh, it came, came to the point in the third round that uh, it's evident that uh, uh, Danny didn't want to engage. Number 5, Derek Lewis. You guys need to engage. Don't get me involved. Make me take points from someone taking a back step. This one is so insane that Herb Dean had to step in to tell Francis Ngannou and Derek Lewis to actually engage inside the octagon. If you were to place a bet on the referee issuing a timidity warning for UFC 226's co-main event, you would be in the money. Absolutely no one anticipated that the knockout artists would be so gun shy when they finally collided. By the second round, the fans started protesting, they showered the cage with booze and held their phone torches in the sky. Lewis had complained to his corner between rounds that he was struggling with his back. Joe Rogan labeled it the most boring heavyweight title fight of all time. Number 4, Caleb Starnes. That hurt him. Corey's got to finish him right here. 30 seconds remains of the fight. Oh, wow. Nate Quarry. There is no doubt that Nate Quarry deserved to win, but so little action happened due to Starnes backpedaling that it wouldn't have been surprising to see a closer outcome. Wanting to stand and bang, Quarry didn't even attempt to take the fight to the ground, so Starnes' unwillingness to strike led to a mostly uneventful bout. Nate did land 84 total strikes, while Starnes landed a mere 12 strikes, but the former middleweight title contender became so frustrated with his opponent's timidity that he began mocking Starnes by running in place as the fight came to an end. Starnes merely peeled around the cage and didn't return fire. The feel of a fiasco was complete by fight's end. Number 3, Holly Holm. Listen ladies, I respect the game plan. I respect the game plan and what we're trying to do. We're going to have to make something happen, okay? The first round of the fight was a cautious one. Holly pushed forward using feints in an attempt to draw Kohea into opening up, but the pitbull was content to moving around and look for counters of her own. The lack of action brought boost from the crowd at the Singapore Indoor Stadium. The timidity continued in the second, forcing referee Mark Goddard to eventually halt the fight in order to compel the bantamweights into action. Holm became a superstar when she put Rousey away with a head kick knockout at UFC 193, and she would give Kohea the same treatment in the third round of the featured bout of a UFC fight night in Singapore. So I guess you could say the fight ended pretty well. Number 2 Ryan Bader Fight. 
Bader's triumphant moment was somewhat marred by a five round fight that was light on notable action. For the majority of the bout, neither man asserted themselves in any meaningful way and the decision was likely based on Bader pushing the action, landing a few of the heavier shots and connecting on a pair of takedowns. The bout was so light on activity that referee Dan Mergliata issued a warning to both fighters for timidity in round 4. Bader, making his promotional debut, took the light heavyweight title from Davis. It was a split decision in an otherwise boring fight that received a verbal warning for timidity, but Bader's title win was big for the promotion. Number 1 Nick Serra There's a reason this was Nick Serra's last professional MMA fight. The younger brother of former UFC welterweight champion Matt Serra, Nick didn't exactly make the Serra name proud against Matt Mikowski. MMA disqualifications for any reason are rare, timidity DQs are almost non-existent, while there have no doubt been others, the only one which jumped to mind on a high profile show was Nick Serra's loss to Mac Mikowski on the Elite XC card. After getting beat up then trying to avoid Mikowski, Serra was ultimately disqualified after he dropped to the mat and decided not to engage with his opponent at all. It was also probably because he was exhausted as sh**. The official decision, disqualification because he wouldn't get up from the butt scoot. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also, don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.